inside Loving Good Arena on the campus of McEachern High School. The mighty McEachern Indians come in at 19 and two, taking on the North Cobb Warriors at 13 and seven. I'm Joel Hillsman, he's Lewis Preston, and Sylvester Williams here with me as well. It's not the same McEachern as a week ago. Number 23, Charles Smith the fourth, has now made it the upgraded mighty McEachern Indians. Coach Preston, what does it mean when you bring in more talent during the season to go along with the talent that you already had? We said they were deeper than deep. They may be deeper than the deepest now. I think one of the things is it goes to show you the championship pedigree that that program has and the championship potential. Now it's a matter, once again, as we were talking all pair, uh, there's one basketball and there's four, five, maybe six guys that can go get you 25 to 30 each night. Let's take a look at our CBA Sports keys to the games. Continue the chemistry building. Avoid a letdown. All they got to do is play that game. That's all they really have to do for the McEachern Indians. On the other side, for the North Cobb Warriors, yeah, there's a lot they got to do. <laughs> yeah. they, they must limit turnovers, maximize each possession, take defense to another level. Sylvester, you were at flying to the hoop when you saw this McEachern Indian team. How impressed were you then? I was super impressed. As a matter of fact, I still get tweets from some of the fans in Ohio asking me how this McEachin team is doing. They came to Ohio and put on a show. I'm talking about became, Sharif Cooper became a crowd favorite in Ohio. You know, we were sitting there talking about all the great point guards that were in that flying to the hoop tournament, you know, highlighted by uh, Tiger Campbell from Le for, for, uh, La La Mute. But Sharif Cooper stole the show. And, and, and to judge on, to go on you guys' points earlier about only having one ball on the court and being on a team that's so deep, if you have a point guard like Cooper, he controls all that. It doesn't matter how many shooters or how many scores you have out there. When you have superior point guard play, he controls all of that, and he'll take care of that no matter how many shooters or how many players they have on this Makicha team. Well, you tweet them back and tell them it's a different team now. <laughs> the starting lineup now for the McEachin Indians, they have been introduced. It's North Cobb. Number two, Nair Dampier, a 5'10 senior. Number three, Corey Davis, a 6'1 senior. Number 22, Kevin Hester, a 6'4 junior. Number 23, Stephen Gilbert, a 6'2 senior. That is the starting five for the North Cobb Warriors. Dampier, Davis, Woods, Hester, and Hubert. For the McEachern Indians, the starting lineup, it looks a little different. It looks a lot of different. Two, Sharif Cooper, a sophomore, 5'10". Number 11, Babatunda Akinbola, a 6'8 junior. Number 23, Charles Smith, the fourth, a 6'6 junior. Number 25, Devin Gordon, a 6'4 junior. Number 35, Isaac Okor, a 6'6 junior. Cooper, Akinbola, Smith, the fourth, Gordon, and Okora. The McEachern Indians have won eight in a row. They'll be all in white, white tops, white bottoms, Blue numbers at Vegas Gold Trim. North Cobb, all in orange. Orange tops, orange bottoms, white numbers, gold, uh, and a little trim. I do love Mr. Kevin Hester, the 6'4 junior. Coach, he has 21 consecutive double doubles. He's done a great job and has really grown over the last two years. So I'm really curious to see how he comes out against these bigger bodies tonight for the Indians on McEachin. North Cobb wins the tip. Swing it now to the right side. They'll hold it. Here's Freddie Woods. Woods spins it to the left over to Dampier. A long three. Side of the iron. No. Charles Smith gets the rebound. Smith puts it on the floor. He's a guard and a forward and a ball player. Gordon spins it over to Okora. Okora going to drive all the way. Too strong. Too fast. Too good. Isaac Okora driving baseline and scores. Once again, they got to do a variety of different things North Cobb does versus the superior talent. Try to limit these possessions. More importantly, they got to try to figure out how to keep him off the glass. A three ball rattles in and out, rebound. It almost hit the floor and a whistle coming down and he's blowing it already, a foul call. It will be on number 23, Stephen Hubert, his first, team's first. Head coach of the McEachern Indians, Mike Thompson in his 10th year. The head coach of the North Cobb Warriors, Terry Gorsuch. Coop up across the timeline now with a Charles the Smith. Charles the Smith, look at me. <laughs> Akinbola holds it between the rings. 
Now he gives it to Gordon. Gordon on the floor. Okora, open, left corner, a three. It skips off the rim. Akinbola tried to keep it alive and did. Akinbola stretched, used those long arms and gets it. Gives it to Gordon. Gordon usually comes off the bench. Okora had it again, but now be patient with it, and they'll spin it back to hoop between the rings. A minute gone by around Akinbola's screen. Stops, back out to Okora, looking not there. Brandon Suggs not in the lineup. Smith, a three, rattled out. Rebound, Gordon offensively, dropped it, and now here comes Nocop with Dampier. In the air, over to Woods, a long three, Woods, no, badly missed. Smith, another board, his second one. Outlets it now to Coop, who's surveying the floor with the right hand dribble now, back and forth with the left. Picked up, now hesitate. Oh, gonna pull it in his mouth. Back of the iron, no good. Rebound comes down to Dampier. Dampier now pushing it on the break. Dampier lost it, couldn't get the layup. Scoops it over to the right, over to Davis. Davis, jumper, front iron, no. Smith, another rebound, his third, running the break. Now he's gonna go all the way down the right of the lane, up, off the window, and score, Charles Smith, the fourth. Once again, North Cobb can't get in the up and down game with Makicha right here. They're just super they just have superior athleticism, and once again, five guys can get a variety of numbers for them. Woods drives, no, shot up, foul by Akinbola. Offensive rebound, give that to Kevin Hester. Hester now 19 points, 14 boards, three blocks last night in the contest against Hillgrove. Coach, you saw him. I mean, what impressed last night in the double-double effort? Well, first of all, with Hester, what he's done a great job over the last two years is he's been able to go over both shoulders, down in the low post, keeps the ball high, what he lacks in size, right? He makes up for heart and competitive fire. Six four and just a junior, so still room. The ceiling is very high. Definitely. And you know what I like about him is the frame. You know, you got a lot of the big guys who are just really skinny, but he has the frame that can kind of compensate for those extra couple of inches that he doesn't have in height. Two minutes gone, four to one. He split the free throws. Here's Coop over to Okora. Okora spins it to Gordon. Gordon now pops it back out to Cooper. Cooper hands it over to Okora. They swing it around to Charles Smith, the fourth. On a the minute. One dribble to the hoop. He walked. No, they call the foul. Count it and the foul. Charles Smith, the fourth. I thought he walked up out the gym. It's a hoop and a horn for Charles Smith the fourth. Evidently, it must be NBA officials out here tonight. That was an NBA call. But I, thought, but I thought the NBA game was later on this evening. <laughs> Six to one. What time is it? 7.30 in the east? I don't know. I don't care. I'm in the McEachin gym. Free throw good. Time to stand still for all I care. Boy, you in Indian heaven right now. Seven to one. No, I'm not. I'm in basketball heaven. I love good basketball. North Cobb going to hang with him, though. He almost double dribble. Back in the backcourt. Now he comes across. Here comes Hubert. Hubert spins it over on the left side. Now it's Davis. Davis now gives it up top now to Dampier. Dampier holding it on the big M for Makicha. North Cobb only lost by 12 the last time they played him. There's a drive. Get that shot out of here. Babatunda Akinbola sent it back to the wall. Once again, knowing that you got a shot block in the middle, you got to pull off of them 12-foot J's, short J. Can't get all the way in the paint tonight. Inbound looking 7-1. to one. Now here comes Woods. Woods spins it back out to the top, and they'll get it over to Corey Davis, a 6-1 senior. Now here comes Dampier. Dampier, the 5'10 senior. They have the senior leadership, but they have to get something going to the basket at the moment, and nothing right now working through Hester. He had it up top. Kick it back out to the top to Hubert. Hubert now catches it back by the timeline, puts it on the floor, goes around the screen. Nothing doing right now. North Cobb stagnant on this offensive possession. Under five minutes to go. A long possession. Goes down low, up. No good. Coop gets the rebound out of the guard spot. Now here comes Cooper up ahead to Okora. Okora catches back to Smith. Open. It's a three ball. On the way. Rattled out. No. Rebound out of the guard spot to Corey Davis. Davis now will bring it up. Long lead pass to Hubert. Hubert catch. Layup. Good. Great, great kick ahead pass right there for that easy layup. They got to continue to do that, but then also be able to control the tempo. Akinbola. Shoulder range. A three ball. Babatunda Akinbola. Show the range, big fella. 10-3. to three. Then he looked over at Coach Thompson and said, that's in my repertoire, Coach. <laughs> it has been added. It has. Wood jumper, no good. Rebound, hit the floor, out of bounds. Coach Thompson holding on to the scores table, though. <laughs> Joel, I'll tell you right now, you keep talking about all these additions, uh, added players, added rep I mean, added three-point shot to the game. I mean, I might have to go get my uniform off. <laughs> go. Gordon. Comes away with it. Here comes Coop blazing over to Okora. Okora caught it. Lamp off the window. Good. Isaac Okora has four points. 12 to 3. And a timeout call by the North Cobb Warriors with 4.06 to go. That's a great timeout right there because you know what? It was starting to get out of hand. Coach Gorse is being a uh, seasoned coach taking that timeout. He focuses troops. A 30 second timeout. 
as we look at our stat row instant replay. Charles Smith, the fourth, goes off the window. This time out brought to you by the Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. Children's Healthcare of Atlanta Sports Medicine. Minimize injury, maximize performance. Sports motion analyst, powered by Dartfish. 4.06 to go, Joel Hillsman, Lewis Preston, Sylvester Williams, courtside at Loving Good Arena on the campus of McEachern High School in Powder Springs, Georgia. Hubert now has it and gives it over on the left side now to Dampier. Dampier up ahead to Freddie Woods. Woods holds it on that left side. Let's see what they can execute, Coach, out of the timeout. Here's Dampier. Dampier hold it, worked on by Coop. Now Jarrett Jones gets up and goes to the scorer's table. There they go, reaching down to that bench. There's a short corner jumper. No, Akinbola just went up and just swallowed it out of the air. Here comes Coop with the left-hand dribble. Hesitate. Over the Akinbola pass was too high. Akinbola still should have caught it, though. He should have. Uh, yeah. po hey, post player 101, if you can put your fingertips on, you got to bring it in. Got to bring it in. That's the truth, coach. You hit him in the worst place possible, coach. You hit him in the hands. Dampier against that pressure. Well, it looks like a 1-2-2-1, one, two, two, one, maybe. 1-2-2. Two, two. A little 1-2-2-3 quarter two, two, court, court. Here comes Woods. Woods now gives it over out to the top to Dampier. Dampier working awfully close to the timeline. He's picked up by Cooper. Spins it across now. Here's Corey Davis. Davis with the left-hand dribble, picked it up high. Spins it off the Woods, who was coming on the back screen. It's not there. McEachern defense tied on a string at the moment. A three out of the corner, badly missed. Charles to Smith, Charles Smith the fourth, another rebound. And now he turns on the Jets, goes all the way to the hoop, got fouled, no call. Outletting now, here comes Dampier. Dampier running, he's going to attack the basket all the way up. No, and a foul call. Foul on the shot. Will it be on Cooper or will it be on Gordon? Let's see. Once again, I, uh, you you called Charles Smith Charles D. Smith the fourth. I understand. I understand. He new to the he new to the team. You got to get your you got to make sure that you get your. Uh, <laughs> you have to get the fourth in there. That's the that's the thing. Yeah, the thing is you got to get name. you got to get your play by play vernacular down. I understand. <laughs> Free throw is good. Twelve to four. This is what I, this is what amazes me about McEachin right here. You just took out Smith, you took out Akinbola, you took out Gordon, and you brought in three players who could get you 20 points anytime they wanted to. Free throw good. Brandon Suggs now back in, and nobody's complained about the role. McElroy is in the game as well. Coop over in the corner. Suggs off the bench. Bang! 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 Give him all three of them. Off the bench and into the scorebook, Brandon Suggs. I tell you, you got a little extra pep in your play-by-play uh, -play calls tonight. I tell you that. Out of bounds, tip. Corners. Coach going to make me go slap off on him in a minute. <laughs> You've been talking to me about this since early November. I'm, ta I'm just trying to talking. tell you what good basketball looked like. Now, here it is, the first time you get to see this edition of Makicha. And, of course, it's SUV TV. Exactly. The SUV TV. The Shot up, no. Okoro gets the rebound. Okoro gathers, gathers it in. Now hands it up ahead. Mikhail Roy now hands it on the wing. He spins it into the corner to Coop. Coop goes baseline. Went whirling Derby. A reverse layup off the window. He blew it. Rebound comes off now. Here comes Davis. Davis pushing it now for North Cobb. Indecisive. Across the lane. Stop. Dampier pops it off to Hubert. Hubert goes baseline. Hubert reverse. No. Out of bounds. And it will go to McEachin with 2.17 to I'm go. I'm going to tell you this right now. You're not getting anything in the paint tonight. There will be no layups. There will be no layups tonight. So, once again, I thought that should have been uh, North Cobb ball. But once again, uh, we got the super cool refereeing core here tonight. I'm not going to get started. I might get fined by the GHSA. You're getting on everybody tonight. <laughs> Spin move by Cooper. The Okora got called for the carry. Cooper was the waiter right there, the way he held that. Two minutes to go, and now North Cobb goes reaching down on their bent. Here comes Trent Lee, a 6'2 freshman, mm -hmm. into the contest. And then uh, Shooter Suzuki, a 5'8 junior. Be very interesting how uh, Suzuki comes in here versus this size, this athleticism. Is he going to be able to uh, keep his composure? Jared Bush getting ready to come in. Makicha has just brought the world in, at you in the first quarter. No good. Jared Jones, yeah, he comes off the bench. Rebound, gives it up to Coop. Coop now over to Al McElroy. McElroy now back to Jones. Jones, one dribble down the lane, up off the window. No rebound, it comes down. Here's a board there by Hester. Kevin Hester, he's been quiet, though, right now at one point at the free throw line. Ball knocked away. They were running without it. Suggs had to go back and get it. Get it up ahead to Coop. Coop now surveys, left-hand dribble, double tap, goes through the lane, put it up, and a foul call. It will be called on Kevin Hester. You know, now, just to, just for yeah. the, the audience out there, Coach Lou just swears that I'm just 
all about McEachin. We had a conversation prior to the season. I was just letting him know how good they were and how tough they were. And he been riding me ever since. I had extra pep in my step every time I put this headset on. All I, all I know, rumor had it that you had an all blue uh, McEachin tuxedo ready to go tonight. <laughs> I heard you were talked out of it at the last minute. I don't never represent without the SUV TV on, brother. <laughs> and, That's and, how I do it. And he was going to have on a blue tux, blue uh, blue shirt, blue tie with gold shoes. With the gold shoes. And white trim. Coop is out of the game after two free throws. Sharif Cooper in for Jarrett Bush. Bush with vital minutes off of the bench. He's a junior. I mean, it, it, listen, the whole team is coming back next year, minus Brandon Suggs and Tyler Willoughby. Mm -hmm. Allen Breed is into the game. I, they just keep bringing them. No good. Rebound. Here comes Bush pushing it with 65 seconds. Bush now over to Breed and a turnover. Miscommunication. Allen goes over and hits Bush. Substitution now. And, and Jinya Asawu comes into the ball game. They, I love the. I love it. It's a magnet what? school. I love it. And the, the game is globalized. I have not seen a Suzuki and a Ozawa on the floor at the same time. Jumper, no, a foul on the wrist, so that'll be on Jarrett Jones. And that's another thing that Hester's added to his game right there, that little mid-range jump shot. And he has, has to add that with the lack of size. But next thing is, is to be able to put the ball on the floor and do a variety of different things. So, Ozawa, as, as Sylvester gives me the phonetic spelling, free throw. Hey, man. No, I, I mean, I appreciate it. I just... I got to be careful tonight. I'm walking on from thin ice. 16 to 6. I'm telling you. 56 and 4, 10 seconds. Free throw good from Hester. He made them both. He has three points. I'm trying to get in the state finals. I have to behave. 51 seconds. Give it over to Breed. Breed now to Jones. Two dribbles back down, and he came and took it away. Good job by Ozawa. He can't. Now you can't do that, though. When you're a guard and a big man put it on the floor, you're supposed to come get it. You're supposed to get it. And you know, that's just big man one-on-one. -on -one. You get the ball on the block, you keep it out of the way of the little guard. First of all, you need to find out where the defense is and see if they're gonna double team you first. Uh, guys, you realize this is McKeechan's second unit, right? I do understand that. All right, Bush holds it now to McElroy. McElroy, who got the start earlier this year, bad pass, bad angle of steal, taken away. Here comes Ozawa. Ozawa now with a little hesitation, yes, goes up with a layup and scores. A little hesitation now, I see you. Didn't you, Ozawa? Nice little finish right there. 16 to 9. McElroy holds it now with 15 seconds. Coach Thompson looking on, holding on to that scores table down there. He's not happy right now. Suggs now spins it over to McElroy. McElroy gets the screen from Jones. Hesitates now, going to drive. Call with a foul, and that will be on Jarrett Jones. So Jones now has picked up his second foul. I don't know why Coach uh, Thompson be down there worried with his hand on the table. He got his he got his second and third unit in here right now. Second, it's the second unit. Oh my fault, the second it's unit. The second unit. As you would know, it's called a depth chart, Coach. There's a drive, shot up, no, and that will be the end. I think, yes, it will, of the first quarter. Well, North Cobb being stingy, McEachin with a 16 to nine lead. Please, y'all, do not listen to Coach. Lewis Press. The SUV TV. <laughs>
three ball by Bush. Bang, Garrett Bush off the bench. And no, into no, the scoreboard. You cannot give up second shots to this team, especially with this depth. Put back Doug with that. That's the, that's the, it's, you know, Hubert, Hubert got the hoop. 19 to 11. 22? 22 got it. Oh, they said the wrong name there. Yeah. It was Hester that got yeah. the hoop, not Hubert. All right, Kevin Hester, that's his first field goal. He has five. There's another three by Bush. No, I was, rebound swallowed up there by Hester. I was trying to give you an assist right there. Taken away. Suggs lost it, and now here comes Gordon. Gordon's off the bench now, the young freshman. Gives it over now to Hester. Hester, a dribble. Back out. And now here's it is Ozawa. Ozawa now has it. Spins it out to the left side to Suzuki. Suzuki now turns on the baseline. The shot is up no good. That was Trent Lee, the young freshman. And a whistle called. And let's see who the foul will be on. It will be on. Oh, that's two now. Yeah, that's exactly. It's a bad second foul right there. But you know what? I like the post move. I like the thought process mm -hmm. behind that. He used his body to get position and lay it up and try to pick up right. that foul on the inside. I like that thought process with that shot. McElroy over to Suggs. Suggs holds it. Now, also keep in mind, this is McKeechan's offensive foul, Jared Jones. Jared's going to have to go sit down. His third foul. And two of them came on offense. Yeah. This is another thing what you're seeing with mm -hmm. the with the depth today. Mm -hmm. This is their fourth game in five days mm -hmm. for McKeechan. Yeah. And they're fresh. <laughs> they're still fresh because every everybody plays. Well, when you go 14 deep. <laughs> They're still fresh, and that's amazing. Well, when you go 15 deep, when you add Joel to the roster, I mean, everything's all good. 19 to 11. I, I don't know how I got into this situation back on November the 6th, the 7th, or whenever it happened. Pump fake stops, now kicks it out to the top. Ozawa, Ozawa with a nice move earlier. There's a drive. Lee, jumper, badly missed. Akinbola gets the rebound. Outletting, here comes Allen Breed. Breed into the forecourt. Breed going to hesitate. He picked up by Gorsh. They're being patient. Now here comes the screen roll action at the top. Breed didn't have it. Goes over to Bush. Bush in the Akinbola. Catch, dunk. Too the easy. dime to Jared Bush. Too easy right there. Akinbola did a great job of keeping his body sealing the guy up top. And then nice catch, easy finish. Cooper and Okoro now will check back into the contest. It will be McElroy and Suggs that will come out. First of all, I got to say this right now. I don't know who the strength and conditioning coach is from McKeachin, but he needs a shout out. Got football bodies on the basketball court right now. Bush holds it. The two-headed point guard monster in now with Bush and Cooper. Akinbola turns back to the basket. Underneath, stop, lost, out of bounds. Will stay with McKeechan. Akinbola recently committed to Auburn. But you know what? I love that killer instinct. Akinbola realized he had a smaller man on him. A man is giving up about five or six inches, and he went right to him. Inside the Akinbola, count it, and the foul. He got beat up, and he scored. Akinbola and one. Suzuki came out, man. He really gave it his best. I like it. So does Suzuki, the 5'8 junior. And I always like to mention North Cobb is a magnet school. I, mean, I have to remind you, it's smart. Once again, I got to go back to this. Bruce Pearl's coming to uh, Atlanta, mm -hmm. gotten another young one. Uh, just looking at his body, looking at those shoulders right there. Young man's got a chance to do some things. And Hester just went up and swallowed up another board. What are you at now, Sylvester? About five or six now? Cross court now. Lee Lee just all over the place. Young freshman. To Coach Terry Gorge wanting it. Now, North Cobb coming in on a seven game winning streak. They won 10 out of their last 11. You know, I like what you said about Bruce coming up here. Let's go and check back. You know, you went, the kid from Tucker, I forget his name, the young man from Tucker, the young man from Westlake, uh, Okiki, and, and the kid from Pebble Brook all went to uh, in the last three. Three. Years. Corner three. No. You're talking about Harper. Harper, Harper, yeah. And then you got Brown, who at one time was over at Columbia. Yep. Ozawa stopped. There's a long three out of the corner. Hill of the rim. No, Allen Breed out of the guard. Forward spot. Rebounds. Gets it up to Bush. Bush to Junior. Back to Breed to Junior. Junior over to another Junior and another Junior. And there's no seniors on the floor. You told us that about 15 times already. But that, I'm saying it as they continue to change the lineup. Once again, I mean, I mean, you know what? I don't criticize success. I analyze it. Foul called on North Cobb. Guess what? Here come Devin Gordon. Guess what he is? A junior. Here come Charles Smith the fourth. A junior. <laughs> I'm not making this stuff up. Man. I might I might apply for an assistant job at McKeechan <laughs> next year. <laughs> Cooper, a sophomore. 
bottoms out of three. My job is to educate you on the talent that you see oh, on the you floor. You can educate me since the beginning of the season. It's like I educated you about Mount Verde. Rebound up ahead, and now here's Coop. Coop with his hesitation. Back, a three ball. Hill of the rim, no. Rebound, Akinbola. Akinbola kept it high. They bothered me, he got fouled. Just like I, I educated you on Upson Lee. We went to Thomaston. See, he didn't get on me down there, Sly. He didn't get on me down there in Thomaston. Because Thomaston, you're not aware of like man in Thomaston. In Thomaston. <laughs> because I'm talking basketball. In Thomaston. I love you, Thomaston, George. There wasn't nothing to even. <laughs> the, the game was over. The game was over midway through the second quarter. Oh, oh my goodness. I don't know what you're talking about, educate. <laughs> just just for everybody out there listening right now, I knocked the headset off <laughs> with the way I just came at it with that crossover. <laughs> Acting ball of free throw good. I got me out here with Lou Preston and Sylvester Williams. Law, him mercy, on a Saturday night in the – in Powder Springs, okay. Georgia. The first lady of SUV TV. Yeah, she just, she just, yeah. yeah Lisa she, Burnett almost hit you with a technical. She did. Yeah, she, she, yeah. <laughs> she just gave you the tea. Yeah, she did. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't even that. It was the facial expression. The jumper is good. good. Hubert with the good. short corner, Jay. Nice little shot right there. 27-13, four minutes to go, second quarter. Charles went in and an offensive foul called on Charles Smith before. The 6'6 junior transferred in from La Lumiere out of Indiana. And he, he's, he's, he's a state champ already in Texas. He's playing with suede Jordans on. Those LeBron. Oh, LeBron. He's playing with the suede LeBrons on. Shoe violation. Shoe Go get the sneaker uh, uh, head behind they, us. They, <laughs> Georgia hoop circle right there behind me. Right Barry, behind. We'll Barry get about you. to jump on me. <laughs> Here comes Coop. Coop hesitating. Now going to in and out, dribble back out. Still kept it alive. Going to pull up the jumper. No good. Rebound. It went long. And now here comes Dampier. Dampier, nice bounce pass up ahead to Davis. Davis up hanging in the air. He had to change his oh, shot. Yeah. Okora got back on defense. Here comes Okoro into the full court. Okoro over to Smith. Catch. Fire. A deep three out of the corner. In and out. No. Rebound swallowed up. Hester is on the glass, though. Yeah. I tell you that. That's why he's the double-double man. Yes, sir. 11. Oh, nice dime drop. Left hand off the window. Couldn't finish. Tip. They fight for it. They come back out. Hubert almost had it taken away, and now foul will be called on Okoro. Okoro looks up, and uh, he, he didn't like that. And hey, you get that missed shot to Akin Bowler right there. Akin Bowler didn't block the shot, but you see how he infect, affected an uh, easy layup. That's, that's what being 6'9 and having a 7-foot uh, wingspan does to him. And, Coach, you alluded to it earlier uh, about McEachin's strength and conditioning. But North Cobb just don't have enough size. No, no. But they're playing with some heart, but they don't have enough size. And, and once again, that is all about the culture of your program right there. Because sometimes there's some things that you can't control. For instance, the fact that uh, McEachin goes 15 deep, you can't control that. you got to, you know, put your team out there and make sure you put them in the best position to score. Cooper drove with the left hand. It was on the pass on the floor. It will be the one and one, though. And it was called on Josh Moten, a 6'2 oh, junior. You want to know when I, as I continue to watch Sharif Cooper, mm -hmm. it's it like nothing phases the young man. Nothing. Cool. You know, on the other side of the pillow, man. Three you know, three. I mean, I mean, I see you going back with the Stuart Scott reference, may he rest in peace. But, I mean, I mean, he's the straw that stirs the drink. Everybody's happy to be out there with him. And then, you know, when he'll take what's available to him. Free throw is good, and then he will take over when he has to. Oh, long lead pass up ahead. <laughs> Akin Bowler goal 10. That, that right there, that's just that NBA, that's that NBA thing. Like, you can't let us see it yep, go in the basket. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> Akin Bowler, that would look like, that looked like beach volleyball. Exactly. He knew it was goal 10 and two. And they're going to call that. They're going to call that on Sharif every time he does it. The carry. That carry, because he's putting his hand up underneath he is. the ball. He is. He, I mean, he is. I mean, super cool ref going to call it, but the other two are going to let it go. I'm just going to leave it at that. Ed Yarbrough, you can call me whenever. Ed, Ernie Yarbrough. Ernie, Ed, it's all the same. <laughs> Jumper, no good. You're going to love Gabe Stovall's piece when it comes out. Oh, Carl caught it with one hand and turned his foot and put it off the window. Isaac Okoro, oh, a beautiful move. SUV TV stat row replay is <laughs> long. 
Oh, that he caught it with one hand and spun and put it off the window. Here comes Woods. Woods goes around the screen and they flip it back out to the top. 215 to go second quarter. Dampier has it. Dampier passing lane shot by Suggs. Suggs with the steal. Up to Smith. Smith, two dribbles, jump stop, fake the pass, jumper no good. Rebound tip out of bounds. Why'd you go get it? It will stay with McKeech. Once, uh. once again, Coach Gorsuch is uh, I mean. He's going to every trick in the book right there, but that move by Coral, that might be a top 10. It, it is beautiful. Watch him catch it with the right hand, come down, and then spin it back up and in. Oh, beautiful. Who outlet it? I missed it. Uh, so Joe Hillsman. So <laughs> but, but the thing about it is just the unselfishness of that team. Jumper, Woods, no. Lit on the basket. Akinbola kept it alive. The old Coral now, here comes Coop. Coop. Slows it up, goes between the legs. Now he's got the right hand dribble. Over alley oop, off, no rebound. Smith couldn't finish it. How did he see that, coach? Just once again, I mean, his head's up at all times. Eyes are always focused. Woods a three, no tip. Uh oh, Suggs on the back, I believe. No foul is going to be on Josh Moten of North Cobb. Wow. I, I didn't see that one. I didn't either. I thought, I thought anything would have been on the back. I'm, of not, the I'm not going to even go there. Akinbola comes out. Brandon McHale, Quentin McElroy comes back in. Is that a – that's over the back offense. Why are they shooting free throws? One and one. One and one. Okay. But, but you right. know, you know here, here's something that's impressive to me. We talked early in the broadcast about it only being one ball and you having all these shooters. You know, do you have to worry about somebody being too selfish? I'm looking at my books right now, and we have 10 total assists from the McEachin team. So that means they're moving the ball around. That means nobody's being too selfish. Anytime you have 10 assists, that means you don't have one guy just dribbling the ball around and taking his shot. If it's 10 assists, they got 10 field goals. So that's 10 assists on 10 made field goals. There you go. Free throw good for Charles Smith, the fourth. He has six points. He's two of two from the line. Yep. You got 10 assists, seriously? Seriously. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I got 10 assists. Four. Ten assists on 11 made field goals. Wow, that's impressive that's, right there. That's, it. that's impressive. Yeah. That might be a stat that we might need to keep an eye on yes. this year in regards to McEachern. Well, Coach, I've always loved, not even just McEachern, but any team, a steal by McElroy. McElroy head down with the left hand. McElroy all the way and scores, putting McElroy off the bench and into the scoreboard. I just like the assist to field goals in, in the game of basketball. It's not talked about as much made of field goals off of assists because that shows the sharing and caring and the seeking and finding. Well, one of the, one of the things um, when I was in, as a college assistant, even as a head coach, I always wanted to talk to teams about was look at your assist to turnover. As a point guard, if you want to be a high-level Division I. Three to one? Exactly. Three to one at a minimum. I love it. You know, the one, I like it. The, the best one I, that we were ever around was when I was in Florida. We won the national championship. It was five to one, assist to turnover. That's why I love you, too. Why is that? I mean, because, you, you know, you, you got that experience, you know, and we talk ball. So, you know, ball look at life. I, I, I'm trying to tell you. That's how, I, that's how I just don't understand why you give me a hard time about this great basketball. Man, you, you should be blessed and honored to be sitting beside me. What <laughs> side at Loving Good Arena? I am. I'm just messing with Coach Preston. I got you a McEachin t-shirt <laughs> in my bag, too. <laughs> he already got one. Post game. <laughs> he, he already got a couple. A free throw. Both of them I, I'm trying good. to get you a couple tickets to this is an objective. This is an objective broadcast. Free throw jumper, uh, excuse me, by McElroy is no good. Lisa saved me. I, I, I think one of the most important things that I'm watching North Cobb right now is the lid. Is a, there's a lid on the basket right here. Mm -hmm. is they got to continue to stay true to who they are. And they are, for the most part, and they're getting good good shots. They're just not going in. And you know what? They're having to work so hard for exactly. them that, that by the time they get the good shot, it's not there. Drive all the way. No tip follow. No tip follow. Yes. Steven Hilbert. I mean, they worked really hard to get that basket right there. 35-19. 18 seconds. Going behind the back now, and here is Coop. Coop with the left hand dribble. Stops between the legs. He'll bring it back now. 35 to 19. Coach Gorge getting up and yelling out the defensive set. He has really been into it. Coop a three. Hill of the Ram. It rolled out. No. Rebound comes down to North Cobb. And we go to the half. Just like that. A 19 point. 
third quarter for the McEachern Indians. McEachern with a 35 to 19 lead over North Cobb. Joe Hillsman, Sylvester Williams, Lewis Preston, the SUV TV.com Saturday Night Showcase. being a leader. Because I like to punish people. I think the big thing is just taking the right shot. Just to embarrass people. I'm a beast. Do my thing whenever I'm putting on someone's neck. My adults will be the best in four years. Introducing Children's Healthcare of Atlanta Sports Motion Analysis, powered by Dartfish. Giving parents and young athletes frame-by-frame -frame feedback on how to minimize injury and maximize performance. Upload your videos, visit our clinic, or let our specialists come to you. No matter the sport you play, Children's helps young athletes take their game to the next level.
Matt Courtside from Loving Good Arena. Glad that you are with us. The SUVTV.com. McEachern and North Cobb. As we get ready for the third quarter, the McEachern Indians with a 35 to 19 lead. Coach Preston quickly, adjustments that you need to see from North Cobb. They got to see some shots go in, first of all. Uh, second thing they need to do is uh, take those opportunities. They've got to limit McEachin's opportunity, and they got to be ready for the wave of players that McEachin brings in. It's almost like Noah's Ark. The only difference is instead of two, they got three of everybody. Second half is underway. McEachin in the white, white tops, white bottoms, blue numbers, gold trim. North Cobb in possession, all in the orange, orange tops, orange bottoms, white numbers, and they've got light blue or that lightly blue navy tr uh, trim. Steel, breed, breed, gonna drive, boom, dribble all the way up, no, on the floor. Now here's the change, Allen Breed gets to start in this second half mm -hmm. versus Devin Gordon. Once again, it is, uh, it is a great problem to have when you can just tinker with lineups. And what I like about them, all of them are kind of the same. Akinbola off the screen and roll and scores. Akinbola now has an 11 points in the contest. And if I told you he was the leading scorer, would you believe it? I would not believe it. Yes, he is. Jumper, foul line, Hester, no, Akinbola. They wanted a goal 10 right there. Now here comes Cooper into the full court. He is. Charles, Charles Smith, the fourth, has seven. Okora has six. Sharif Cooper has seven. Akinbola had nine at the break. He has 11 in the contest now. Foul call on. Foul called on Corey Davis. Yeah. And a timeout, a quick, full timeout call. So three left for North Cobb. 7 on 5 to go, 37 19. What's this timeout about? This timeout. this timeout right now is simply about trying to control the tempo and getting their minds right because they can be ran out of the gym here really fast. Once again, like we talked about with McEachin, they got so many different bodies that they can come at you in waves. It's, it's about controlling that tempo. Joe Hilton, Lewis Preston. Sylvester Williams here with you. Courtside from Loving Good Arena on the campus of McEachern High School. Region 3, 7A matchup. The region tournament is at Hillgrove, which is in Powder Springs. Here comes Charles Smith, the fourth. Jumper, foul line, hill of the rim, no. Rebound, swallowed up again. A good board there by Hester. Quickly, they bring it into the full court between the legs. Now here's Dampier. Dampier with the left-hand dribble. He pulls a deep three. Front iron, no. Nothing going in. Chase down out of the guard spot. is Coop with the rebound. Coop accelerates. Goes behind the back. Lost it. A turnover. It's taken away by Freddie Woods. Woods now brings it back this way. He skips it up ahead. Here's Davis. They knock it away in another steal. Breed gets it. Traveling. It's a little sloppy right there. Last uh, two or three times up and down the floor. Once again, get the ball in. Get back to and get true to who you are on both ends of the floor for both teams. Inbound, side out of bounds for North Cobb and fires it off into the backcourt. Nice crowd here in this big, expensive, living good arena. Not your normal gymnasium for high school. Not at all, but this is not your normal high school either. That is right. Former college, am I right? It's a beautiful campus. Beautiful campus. Yes, it was a college. Hester right there with a nice little post move. Got Akinbol up in the air a little bit to get that little body contact. I'm not sure if it's necessarily a foul foul. But once again, I'm not dealing with the black and white tonight. Second foul call. So Hester at the free throw line. Got the roll. So Hester now at the line, he is four or five and has six points and one field goal, but he's been swallowing the glass. 37 to 20, a 17 point advantage for the Indians. Free throw, in and out, no. So rebound comes down and here comes Coop. Coop up ahead now to Okoro. Okoro now between the legs and pops it back out to Coop, who's at the top. He's worked on defensively now by Dampier. Goes behind the back, spins it in the corner to Charles Smith. Smith now back out to Allen Breed. Breed skips it across now. Okoro pump fake jabs. Now he's going to pull a deep three. It's offline, badly missed. Long rebound into the corner comes to Dampier. 
Dampier being pressured in the backcourt by Breed. They've got to get the ball up. One-handed pass up to Hubert. Hubert now gives it off. Woods, a jumper. It is good. High archer, Freddie Woods, his first field goal. But, but even, with that, even with that shot right there, it, I mean, very hard. Spend a lot of energy to get that shot off. Coop with the left-hand dribble. And now holds it back and goes between the rings. 37 to 22. Kicks it across. Okoro, one extra pass to Breed. A corner three. Bang, bang, bang. A three ball. The hockey assist to Coop. The main assist and the real one to Okoro. Why you keep elbowing me on every shot? Davis with the field goal. It's just that extra ball movement. That's good basketball. Coach. That's great basketball. That's great yeah. basketball. That extra pass is perfect. That yeah, extra pass is what, what gets it. But you know what? That's where you got to show kids in film session mm -hmm. to make sure that they continue to understand that because they can get away from that quick, fast, and in a hurry. And then that's why you get gray hair as a coach. Turnover by Cooper. This is SUV TV's sixth game covering McEacher. Okoro averaging 21.2 points in the five previous games. Coop averaging 12.5 in four games. I didn't have his numbers from the Wheeler game. Uh, they shine on SUV TV. Now, you talk about Coop and how he de demonstrated, but he has the knack and the ability to take over, especially on the big stage. At City of Palms, mm -hmm. he averaged 27 points a game, including a career-high 42-point game. Mm -hmm. and, and see, that's the thing what separates him for me. It's a point guard who understands when is my time. You know, you have all these shooters, you have everybody on these on your team who can play, but when you have a point guard who understands, okay, now it's time for me to put the team on my shoulder. Drive, it's on the floor, kick ball. Let me ask you this, uh, Joel. Who does he remind you of? Cooper. I, he's Sharif. I, I really can't. I'm not really great with the comparisons, especially when they're not obvious, but okay. I, I've seen him. Oh, nice inbound. Oh, blue layup by Hubert. Rebound comes to Okora over to McElroy. McElroy, a three ball, hill of the rim. No, rebound comes down to Dampier. I, he just, he's, I, um, I see a lot of Chris Paul in him. I see what I see. I see a lot of Chris Paul. I'm just going to say he's, he's the best Sharif Cooper he can be. Yeah, well, he I, definitely, he's, he's definitely Sharif. that. Three ball, Smith, strip the nets. Charles Smith for three ball. At some point, you knew one of those was going down because he shot a couple of them that kind of went in and out. Once again, just staying true to who he is. Bounces it over now, and here's Davis. Davis now going to drive, goes up, fighting on Jones. Got it. Are they going to count it? And the foul. Corey Davis. He has four points and an opportunity now. For a three-point play, 43-26-404. We got some, we got some uh, NBA officials up in here tonight. Uh, the same way we got a variety of different people sitting in the stands. Got a few fellows from Georgia State. Won their seventh game in a row today. Free throw, no good. Cooper, pull up, a three. No, he got fouled. Dampier fouled and made the Cardinal sin, fouling a three-point shooter, the 5'10 senior now with that foul, and it is a 17-point ball game with 3.55 to go. Tyler Willoughby, a senior who's been in the program a long time now, will check into the ball game. Free throw, Cooper, no good. And you know what I like about Willoughby? Willoughby had an impressive dunk the other night. It was showing it on uh, OST 24-7. They showed the replay of Willoughby going up and just dunking on this man. I was like, ooh. Cooper leaving points at the free throw exactly. line. Very uncharacteristic right here. Suggs comes in along with Boy. Willoughby, so Smith and Okoro will Boy. go out. It might it might be them ice cream dream shoes he's wearing right now. <laughs> <laughs> the colorful, one. Very. Makes one of three. But they're low top. I, I can never understand kids playing in low top. I, I don't know how the young men do it. I have no comment. Because? Uh... Because I don't care how good the tape job is. Yeah. I had the old school Georgetown moon boots on when I played. But you know how everything old become new again, Coach. You see McKeechum short? Yeah. Willoughby tried to get the rebound out of bounds. It was knocked off of the Warriors. I had a player tell me, like, I kept asking about why they were rolling the shorts up. Now they're saying that the, the, the long shorts get in the way. I don't understand that. 
I don't think Allen Iverson ever had a problem with long I didn't. Shorts. I didn't. I, I can't. I, if my shorts don't come to my knees, I just can't do it. And that, that was before the Fab Five. Suggs put it on the ground. Floater. Go! Oh, he drove and scooped and scored. Brandon Suggs. Now, Coach, here's something. Brandon Suggs is a senior. Uh, finally, one the of them. There are two seniors on the floor right now for McEachin. Suggs and number 30, Tyler Willoughby. Finally, one. They only have two. Oh, boy. So you talking about I got to heal your mouth for the next two years? Possibly three. Oh, Lord. Free throw is good. 47 to 26. It's a 21-point advantage. Hubert pass was deflected. Jones reached in and knocked it free. Suggs recovered it. Up ahead to Coop. Alley, there's your oop. A layup to Jordan. His first field goal. 49-23, the gate, the dam may have just busted. 49-26, 251 to go. Took his time, he bounced it over. Almost a turnover. It may be out of bounds off McEachin, and then it goes to North Cobb. Incredible. And you know, it's funny why you guys just said the dam may have just busted open, because earlier when the score was 37, it was 37-15 or something like that, I was saying that North, I was thinking to myself, North Cobb was doing a great job of defense of holding McEachin to 37. They were 35 to 19 at the break. Yeah, it still looks like a 70-point game for McEachin, who conversely scored their first triple-digit 100-point game the other night against Hillgrove with 102. North Cobb has scored 105 this year. Yes. Once again, not bad for the Magnus School. Not at all. Inbound, now goes up, an uh, entry pass, not an inbound. He's upset with himself as Kevin Hester. Yeah, he up ahead to one. Jones, caught it, layup good. Man, they just sharing and caring, seeking and finding, swishing and dishing. Timeout. Got him doubled up. It's a 25 point game. You know what was incredible right there was Coach Thompson uh, pointing to Sharif, pointing to the team, making the extra pass, rewarding the big man for running the floor. You have to. When you have you a big to. man run the floor, you have to. This timeout brought to you by the Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, sports medicine. Minimize injury, maximize performance. Sports motion analyst, powered by Dartfish. Visit CHOA. Dot org slash sports med to learn more. Joel Hilsman, Lewis Preston, Sylvester Williams. Timeout was called by North Cobb. They only have two remaining. It's 51 to 26. McEachin with the lead. Can we give them more timeouts? Nine players have scored for the McEachin Indians. Once again, the challenge is going to be can you continue to play unselfish basketball all year? and how you're going to be able to handle adversity at some point. When that happens, that's to be determined. Nine players have, have played, Coach. I mean, 11 players have played, nine have scored. Get that shot out of here. Sent away by Jared Jones under two minutes ago. And now here comes Coop. Coop with the left hand. Oh, man, he, got, he almost gave Jared Jones a haircut. <laughs> Jump ball, my goodness. Vision is something else. The court vision on this young man is something else. Jared Jones almost had his head knocked off. <laughs> and it wasn't even for him. No. It was for Suggs on and, the and back. The crazy thing, Jones was doing the right thing because he was sprinting to put his head on the rim. That's exactly. what you get taught as a big man. Exactly. Bush is in. Jones shot, no good. Suggs rebound, up, good. Brandon Suggs. He came off the bench in this contest and now has played pretty well. He has. Nine points and a steal by Jarrett Jones. Jarrett now gonna put it on the floor. Gets it up ahead to McElroy. McElroy gonna go left hand off the glass and scores. Quentin McElroy, his second field goal. And they're blowing it wide open. 55-26, three, no, rebound, off. Put back up, the freshman turns with the right hand, no. Suggs skies and gets the rebound. Suggs now puts it on the floor with 120 to go. Suggs with the right hand dribble. Suggs gonna go all the way, left hand up, no. Rebound ripped down there by Hester. I'm sure he's got double digit boards now. And a foul in the backcourt by Tyler Willoughby. Just keeps playing, Hester just keeps playing hard. But once again, we talked about this earlier. You couldn't get in a track meet with them, and it's hard when you're down so many points, you're trying to, there's no such thing as a 29 point shot, Joe. There is not. And if we get to 30 points, we will have a shortened fourth quarter. Really? 55-26, we will. It goes to six minutes thank if it's for, 30 or more. Thank you for educating me on the rules. You should know since you're uh, one of the assistant ADs here. 
driving now. Suzuki floats it up, no. Suggs gets the rebound, he outlets it now. Here's Mikael Moore. Mikael Rush spins it to the corner to Bush. Bush long cross court pass to Willoughby. Willoughby in the final minute. Willoughby gonna go turn and go baseline. Willoughby on the other side and score. Tyler Willoughby, a nifty move. It's a 31 point game. Gorge now turnovers, he was going for Suzuki. 10 players have scored now. And you know, even though he won't get it, you should get, Jared Jones should get a steal for that one. He can't get a block, he can't get credit for the turnover, but he should at least get a steal or something for that I because think, he calls that. I just think one of the things, you just got to go at the rim and go hard. Yeah, you got to. You got to yeah. go at him. You know, but kids are too worried about being put on a mixtape or being embarrassed on the replay. Jones, no. Rebound, young freshman Trent Lee. Solid minutes though for Lee as a freshman. Up ahead now, here's Ozawa. Ozawa got in, knocked away as Tyler Willoughby was sprinting the floor for the McEachern Indians. Once again, for both of you guys here, it's kind of a lost heart in, in high school. We even see it in college. Nobody pulls up for that 12 to 15 foot J off the glass anymore. Elbow jumper, no good. I don't know why either, Coach. It's a money shot. Ooh, nice pass, layup, good. Oh, I see him with the dime, Ozawa to Kevin Hester. That's the great hands right there. It's a great pass right there by Ozawa. One of the few highlights for them here in the third quarter. Suzuki and Ozawa, though, have been solid off of the North Cobb bench. The three ball is no good. We will have a full fourth quarter. 57 to 28. McEachern leading North Cobb on our Saturday night SUV TV showcase. Eight minutes on the clock, SUV TV. It is our Saturday night showcase, the McEachern and Indians and the North Cobb Warriors. I'm Joel Hillsman, joined by Lewis Preston, Sylvester Williams. Courtside from Loving Good Arena, 57 to 28. We have a full fourth quarter by one point. I'm glad. I love basketball. <laughs> North Cobb in possession. Ozawa, Suzuki, Hester, Lee, and Gorch, the five on the floor that started, a backcourt violation. No, it was deflected, okay. Okoro upset about it, along with Bush, Smith, Akinbola, and Breeze. How many different lineup combinations have we seen? Gorge, corner, three, no. Rebound ripped down by Okoro, who gives it to Breed, outletting it up ahead to Charles Smith. Smith hesitates one way and the other, lost it. It's a turnover, picked up in a steal where we credit it to Hester. And Ozawa turns on the Jets. Go oh, get that shot out of here. Sent away, I can bowl him. That's one of those, he was timing that one. You, you yeah. know, he, he had the look in his eye. He was waiting on that one to come up. Yeah. I, I love the aggression by Ozawa, 5-5, yeah. five, five, but that's 6-8 right. with a long, long on. His, on. his hands come to his knees. Yeah, he reached over here and shook my hand when he blocked that. Oh, scoring Suzuki off the inbound. Once again, North Cobb's going to continue to play hard and play the way that they played, which has led to them winning seven straight games. Smith, a three bottom. Wow. Charles Smith, the fourth, a three ball. That is his second triple of the game, 60 to 30. Doubled up. I'm about ready. Whistle call. I'm about ready to take the headset out, set, headset off and go get a hot dog. Because Charles Smith over here knocking down shots. He didn't come in. He didn't come in and uh he had 13 oh, points. Oh boy. And he this he needs this burn too. That's the thing, to get more acclimated. And only, oh. there's only a, a week you left. About, you know about acclimated. You said he scored 20 a couple games 19. ago. 19. In his first game. 19, 20, it's all semantics at that point. This is his third game with McKeecha. Skipped off, no good. He had nine points last night against Marietta. The shot was bothered. Lee goes up. Akinbola, everything from the floor to the ceiling, coach. Mm -hmm. Now, Hester, look at that. Get that shot out of here. Don't need the dribble. Just got to put the ball up. Breed stops. Top side, three. No, Akinbola, Scott, and get the rebound. They go college for a loose ball over the back. 
Akin Bowler just long. He is. <laughs> he just long. Oh, he already man. six eight and he long. But you know what? That that will bode well. And it pains me to say this for Coach Pearl and Auburn. But uh, Auburn just got a new AD, a uh, good buddy of mine, Alan Green. Get that shot out of here. So, no doubt in my mind that he he's going to love and really enjoy watching this young man. And he prides defense, Coach. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. He don't care about scoring the ball. He cares about manning that paint where the bit boys play, something that you don't know about, Joel. I don't. I don't go down there. I drive down there every now and then to kick it out, but that was it. Drive where? You got to know, you got to know when to go and when not to go. I'm not driving on that Bowler. You hey, might, Tony Parker float ain't that high. You might you might drive to the QT to get some coffee. A three in and out goes rebound ripped out of there. And he's athletic. It just man, and it's still raw, coach. Right. Technically, right. technically three out of the corner. No, of course back tap. Akinbola put it on the floor, and that's what a guard is supposed to do. Ozawa with the steal. Ozawa not gonna hesitate. <laughs> Bother from behind. You know the inverse of this. Ozawa drives, and Akinbola blocks it. Akinbola puts it on the floor, and Ozawa <laughs> goes and cookies it. Here comes Josh Moten into the contest. And in the infamous words of you, ball don't lie. It don't. <laughs> Basketball guys either gorge, elbow, jumper, badly missed. No, rebound come down to Akinbola. Oh, a long lead pass to Smith. Smith all the way up. Count it. And the foul. The hoop and the horn. Charles Smith, the fourth. And one. And you know what? That's more than being a basketball player. That's working in the weight room, too, because he was pulled by his arm. And, hey, that's strength right there. That's that's more than being on the court. Stop. This is his third game with the team. Third game. Man, he looked like he'd been with the team all year. He over there laughing with the, the coaching staff and everything. Third game. At 19 in his first game against Hillgrove, nine last night against Marietta, and now he's at 17, 13, 16 in this game. I might just take the headset off and go sit with Tavares Hardy from Georgia Tech up in the stands. 63 to 30. He picked a good one to come and see, didn't he? Talent all over the floor. Turn. There's a jumper from the foul line. No good. Cooper now gets the rebound out of the guard spot with a 33-point lead. They, they, they lead them by more than they have. Top side, three, bottom. Sharif Cooper, a three ball. 11 in the contest for Coop. 66 to 30. 522. McElroy with the steal. Here's Cooper. Alley up to Okoro. Throws it down on the alley. -oop. Isaac Okoro. He's been quiet. He has eight. Back this way quickly. Gorge in the middle. Almost a steal. Kicked out there. Open pump fake. Now Suzuki drives. Gives it back out. Now here's Moten. Moten back out to the top to Ozawa. Charles Smith reached in. Tried to get the steal. They're chasing him down. Ozawa now maintains it. Kicks it up to Gorge. Gorge going to drive. He saw a call. Oh, Akinbola comes, so he changed his mind. Lee, no good. Rebound. And McElroy. Here comes Coop back this way across the timeline. Coop going to drive all the way. A blocking foul called on Suzuki. And the entire bench from McEachin was standing up telling Coop to throw it up because he had a man running. Fellas, as I'm watching this, both teams run up and down the floor. The one thing about McEachin, just watching them, um, we talked about adversity and things of that nature. Having a chance to coach two different championship teams, when you see the bench there cheering and clapping the way that they are, this is a, this is a team-led locker room. This isn't a coach-led locker room. You got a chance to do some special things there. Mm -hmm. Free throw. Good. Coach, does it look like a Dick's team? Very much so. Okay. But you, you know it's amazing. You talk about a team-led team. You got a guy like Charles Smith coming in here mm -hmm. who's, who's a top-ranked junior in his own right throughout the nation. You could have had a team fold up and say, nah, we don't want this kid here. But it looks like they welcomed him with open arms, and he's just been here like he's been here from day one. Akinbola, another block. Coop now has it in a 39-point game. Smith, a three. No. Rebound out of the guard spot in Suzuki. Suzuki now head up, though, with the right hand dribble. Left hand now crosses the timeline. Now he's going to jet and drive and float it up. Oh, oh, there's the floater. Suzuki got it up over Akinbola. I see you, Suzuki. A beautiful floater. Oh, the teardrop. Nice. Nice. 69-32. Rebound lead to freshman. Lee going to come back this way. We've got 3.55 to go. Lee going to go all the way on Akinbola. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, rejected out of bounds. That's seven. That's seven. That's here, come, seven. here comes some more. Here come the third team. Willoughby in now. Davis, they get a hand. Here come Noah Green into the contest. 
I gotta ask you Here this. Here come so. Corey Jones and now also Austin Izawuke. The entire team now has played. Once again, I gotta ask you this question. Do you have a floater in your arsenal? Or are you just one dimensional with your three corners? Gives it off. You talking to me? I'm talking to you. Man, you listen, man. I, coach, I'm gonna have to break out the old highlight film. I'm not the I wasn't no five star. Heck, I probably wasn't even a two star. I look game though. But the, the jump stop, I, I never got called for a charge that him. Jump stop, float that thing up. Okay. I mean, I, and I learned that from long jumping. The way I had to long jump and land, I took that to basketball. A deep three, Suzuki, no. Rebound, kicks it out in the corner. Gorich, a three. It is short, no good. Them D-League trials were fun, though. I ain't, hey, ain't going to lie. You know, Two times. You know, with, with that talk that Joel Hills was talking about, his basketball skills. Now, Coach Lewis, you ought to ask him, who's the one-on-one -on -one SUV champion here. Green open left corner three. No good. Rebound is going to come down to Willoughby. Willoughby goes underneath and puts it up off the window. No. Stop. And now they're going to outlet it 69 to 32 and the crowd now begins to you, you see head the, for you the, see the There's a drive. Look no good. Rebound comes down to Willoughby. Look at the conversation. Look at the play by play. Willoughby now lost it in the middle of the floor. Here comes Ozawa. Ozawa driving. Dumps it off the lead. Lee up and scoring off the window. He finna make me say something. Uh, are you gonna, uh, who, he finna, ask him the he question, finna make, He finna but, make me say something, But man. once again, I got I to gotta give A 25-point game. I got to give North Cobb props. They're continuing to play the way that they play. Uh, and you know what? They're going to learn a lot of things from this and take this, especially after a great win that they had last night, although I gave you the wrong score. What's the difference, though, in losing by 12? Will it be a three straight on? All three of them right down the shoot. They lost by 12 the first time. Mm -hmm. once, once again, when you have teams that are, that are this deep and they can come at you a variety of ways, I think it's very important that, I mean, that 12-point game and now they're down 38 right now, 72 to 34. You know, you got to take the positives out of this. Is it Wuke or three? No good. You got to take the positives out of this and you got to move on to the next one. 144 to go. All 15 players have played for the Makita Indians. Yeah. You know, Where's your uniform? Where's your uniform I, at? I don't have one. Oh, oh I you sure? hosted it. it was a Wuke. You see, Will Willoughby just hit that hit that three, and you guys are saying that Willoughby's on the third team. If Willoughby goes that's to up, any other up. school in the state, he's a starter, and he probably he probably averages 15 to 20 points a game. Super. Any other school that's in up, the state. And Super. also, Coach, this yeah. is the third team, not to belabor the point, all juniors. See, Except for Willoughby. Willoughby's the senior. Everybody else a junior. Free so throw so, good so, so as a Wuke. So basically, you're telling me that there's some coaches tonight that are not doing their job there, because there should be some more coaches up in here right now. There, there, should be, there should be a coaching staff. of Any coach in the metro Atlanta area who's not playing an out-of-town game should be in this gym tonight. Coach, this is why I say they're deeper than deep. This is the third team. I'm not, I don't, I'm not trying to, I'm not a homer. I'm, I'm objective with basketball. This is the third team. This team could finish second or third, maybe four, third, third or fourth in the region with this lineup. Yeah. There was this is a state team, a state playoff team that's out here now, and they're getting mop-up time. Well, there was, a, there was a comment. You were not, uh, you were not privy to it at the time. We were saying, is this team, from a depth standpoint, oh, holistically better than oh, my Burry across this, the board. I would have to say yes. And see, that, that's, where, that's where the comparison gets, gets fuzzy. Everybody, I think, would agree that depth-wise, they may be better than Mount Verde, but it's those top seven that Mount Verde have that make them stand out above everybody else and, in the nation. And I will ask you this with 50 seconds left in the game, Mr. Hillsman, is, is McEachins – Top five comparable to Montverde. No. no. You asked Joe. Which top five? <laughs> Whichever They've one. They've had four different starting lineups this week. Yes. Once again, Joe. They can play with Mount Bird. They could beat Mount Bird. Mm -hmm. Once again, Joe. Mount Bird can beat them. I'm, listen, I'm, I'm being very serious. Yeah. RJ Barrett and uh, Okora will be. That's who's going to match up on each other. Right. Okay. Mike DeVoe, the point guard, they he played at Oak Ridge last year, came up here and Coop gave him the business. Okay? 
So there's your backcourt taken away. Nimbard is good. I like Nimbard. I can throw Jones Akinbola on him. And both of them come off the bench if I need to. Who going to guard Charles Smith the fourth? You want to know what I love about you, Joe? Your passion. Your passion is very, very evident here tonight. It's just, it's, oh, no agreed. Everybody has gotten in the book, I think. Pete the Horn, 76 to 38 is the final. It ain't even passion. It's not, it's not even passion like that, Coach. It's just that you, you have to believe, you have to know what you're seeing in the basketball game. Right. And you see it. Absolutely. And I like Mount Verde. Right. We've had Mount Verde. Me right. and you call yeah, Mount Verde together. Yeah. So, you know, and, and you see what McEachin does, 76-38. This is a region game. But they, they are, they have to be in the national conversation. Yes, sir, go ahead. Turn it around. Another one. Yep. So a 76 to 38 victory for the McEachern Indians. And we are now joined by the McEachern Indian head coach, Mike Thompson. Congratulations, Coach Thompson. Thank you, fellas. Appreciate it. Coach Lou, I'm going to finish up the book. You can go ahead and start it off with Coach Thompson. Coach, I think one of the, the questions we keep asking each other here, you got so much depth. Uh, yeah. your, your team plays so well together, and I think Sharif Cooper's the straw that serves the drink. You know, how do you keep them focused game in and game out and not having them look too far down the road? Well, you know, those guys have been playing together a long time, and their goals have not really changed. Uh, they're pretty consistent. We talk a lot about sacrifice because, you know, on a team like we've got, you know, like tonight might have been one of the best true point guard games that Sharif Cooper's played. Mm -hmm. uh, he gave up some of his stuff to get others involved, and uh, all of our guys are doing that. I mean, we've got guys that could start in a lot of places uh, that enjoy playing with each other, they have a good time, and uh, we work our butts off in practice. That's some of the most competitive stuff we get is when we're in practice. And, uh, you know, so they do a good job. And he is the, st the straw for us. Uh, and tonight, you know, it just uh, – he lets everybody eat. And on a night like this, that's, that was very good. How do you take – you add Charles Smith the fourth to this, to this team that's already got great depth. What does he add to the team, and how has the team adapted to him since he's come over? You know – I would be lying to you if I said it was just road smooth, but he's such a great kid. Uh, he's a great player. He acknowledges the other guys. Uh, you know, he doesn't get ruffled by anything. Our guys, you know, they're competitive. They want to play. Uh, and when they get in the gym with Charles, as we've been in there, uh, he's earned that with them. You know, they see him play. They know he's going he's gonna to benefit them by getting them the ball when they need it. Uh, he's such an easy kid to get along with, and he plays the game the right way. Right. And my guys appreciate that. They know when they see a good player. Right. And uh, so it's been, other than uh, just the turmoil of all that, you know, it's unexpected. You know, I mean, that guy comes in and you're thinking, you know, that's, that's one of the best players uh, around. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's, uh, he's fit in well. And I'm going to tell you what, he gets better every game so right. far. So. Uh, yeah, it's been fun. He's having a good time, and so are we. I really watching Akinbola being a former big man, big man coach myself. First of all, great feet, great speed, very good hands. Continues to get better every time that I see him. What do you think is going to be that next that next progression for him uh, in preparation? He's already committed to Auburn. What do you think is going to be that next that next step for him? If he gets two solid on the block moves, mm -hmm. you know, maybe uh, something that he's got to go to offensively that he feels comfortable with. To be honest with you, the guy doesn't have a bad shot from 15, 16 feet, you know, and uh, I think if he gets a little more comfortable offensively, uh, I think that's going to put him at another level because right. already he's an elite defender as it is right now. So uh, I think when he gets a little more comfortable offensively, um, and he's just starting to do a little bit of that with us. I think Jared helps him, too. They push each other. Right. Uh, you know, before we got Jared here, uh, he didn't have anybody really to challenge him from an athletic big guy standpoint. So now those two guys can beat on each other. And, it, uh, you know, it makes them better. It makes us better. So uh, 
you know, we, we can get a pretty con a competitive practice in when we've got 10 guys on the floor. Coach, this is Charles' third game, right? Yes. Third game. All right. I take it this is his first game. He led you in scoring tonight with 16 points. Did he? Okay. Uh, 15 players played, 12 scored. Right. I just love it. At one point in the first half, you had 10 assists on 12 made baskets. A lot of people talk about, okay, Charles coming in and this team, the chemistry issues. Mm -hmm. When you put up numbers like that in the fourth game in five days, is there really a chemistry issue? I don't think so. Uh, I think our guys have, uh, you know, and it's something we talked about. I mean, we didn't avoid that issue. I mean, as a team, we've talked about it. We've talked about it as families. You know, our our families of our players, our coaches have all been involved in it. Charles's family has been involved in it. He's got a great mom and dad, by the way. I mean, they're just great people. And and so everybody in our in our family here has been involved in it, and they've welcomed him in, and uh, and our kids have as well. And you know, uh, like I told uh, Coach earlier, I mean, you know, if you're going to have a team like we have right now. Guys are going to have to sacrifice something. And, you know, sacrificing something at this age is tough. Uh, but it's not a bad characteristic to develop, you know. And so we talk about that a lot. And so far our kids have done a really good job. Now, I don't crawl inside their head and see what they're thinking. But from an outward standpoint, uh, we've done a really good job of, of just – I think our chemistry is pretty good. What do you think the national schedule has done for your program going forward, not only for the remainder of this season within Georgia, but this is your 10th year, and you've mm -hmm. been building and building and building. Right. The national schedule this year, we went 8-2 and two outside the state of Georgia, 3-1 and one at City of Palms, 2-0 and oh at Flying to the Hoop, a tough one at the Council Research to DeMatha. But just, just what does that national schedule do? It's not foreign to McKeecher and the ladies, the boys' right. first time really stepping out. Right. It's uh, Number one, it's a lot of fun. You know, and uh, you get your guys on the road and they get to, you know, they travel so much in AAU now that back in the old days when they didn't do that, that kind of schedule in high school was a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably more of a big deal for our coaches than it is for our players because they're traveling all over the place. Uh, we don't get a chance to do that. I took my first plane flight in 57 years. I've never been in a plane. And I flew to Pittsburgh when we played up in the Cancer Research Classic. Because of high school basketball. Yeah. And, and you know, I figured at this point uh, I wasn't going to get there by car. <laughs> so I had, to, I had to get in a plane to do it. So uh, we've had a lot of fun. But I tell you what, you build some, uh, you build some character playing against good teams. And uh, it gives you a chance to see how you measure up. And that builds confidence in your kids, especially when we, you know, like we had some success. So it, um, you know, it helped us, I think, from a con – our guys are pretty confident, but – you don't really know till you get out there and, and throw it up with some of those guys. Mm -hmm. All right, Coach Thompson, thank you. Guys, appreciate everything you guys do. It's great to see you in the gym. Thank you. Uh, enjoyed a lot. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good one. Coach. A nine-game winning streak with a 76-38 victory over North Cobb. Uh, they will solely win Region 3A during the regular season. Region tournament a couple of weeks away, and they'll play that at Hill Grove. North Cobb falls to 13 and 8 in the region. Final thoughts, Coach Preston? First of all, if I'm North Cobb, nothing to put my head down about. Uh, every once in a while, you just run into a buzzsaw. We've got Sharif Cooper over here. You run into a buzzsaw, and tonight they ran into a buzzsaw. Reminded, this team reminds me a lot of what that second national championship team we had at Florida. I mean, pick your poison. Pick your poison, pick your lineup. At the end of the day, we can score 110 or you can score 55. But a win is a win is a win. Gotcha. Coach Preston, enjoy it, brother. Joel, yeah, it was as good as advertised. Always. He's Lewis Preston. I'm Joel Hillsman. And we thank for our entire staff, Marcus Burnett, Lisa Burnett, your SUV TV Saturday night showcase the third game the McEachern Indians have played with Charles Smith the fourth. We hope you enjoyed it down the road. All right, next week, just stay tuned at SUVTV and the SUVTV.com. You never know where we'll be on the SUVTV showcase. Once again, the final score to McEachern Indian 76, the North Cobb Warriors 38. We'll see you down the road right here, the SUVTV.com.